<laughs> but I know I'd be on stage with, and the audience would start laughing. Yeah. You know, and there wasn't anything funny going on at that moment. And I'd turn around and Robin would be, and he would never tell me what he was doing. Right. You know, no, nothing, nothing. You know. Did you ever find out what it was? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everybody? One-on-one with Christian Harloff. That's me, Christian Harloff. And this is a cool, cool episode, man. I was lucky enough a couple weeks ago to have the great Clancy Brown on the show. And then when I was on Twitter, I saw a response. And it was from Kurtwood Smith. That's right, Kurtwood Smith, Dead Poet Society. Um, you got uh, the, the 70s show, and how about RoboCop? I mean, RoboCop. And he responded, and, he's, and he was talking about how much he liked the interview, and I said immediately, I gotta have you on. He said, let's do it. So here we go, this is the episode. It's Kurtwood Smith. We sat down, we talked about his career. We definitely talked about RoboCop a lot. We talked about what it was like. His story about Peter Weller was very interesting. So we talked about that. We talked about what it was like on 70s show, how he got involved in acting. Um, just listening to his show, I was in awe of him. That's what I've been loving about this show, is really learning about all my guests that I'm sitting down having these conversations with. And I thank you guys for really, in, uh, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the show. Go back and check out some of the other ones. Maybe if you, you, you're not familiar with a guest, you might learn a lot about them. That's what I implore you guys. Please check out this show and continue to rate on Apple and do all that stuff. And I can't wait for you to watch it. And just to let you guys know, this episode, this episode of One on One with Christian Harloff is brought to you by Rode Microphones. Rode's proud to present My Rode Reel, the world's largest short film competition. This year, there's $1 million, $1 million worth of prizes up for grabs. You make a three minute short film in any genre that you like. A behind the scenes video showing a road product being used and you could win big entries are open until july 31st so head on over to myroadreel.com again myroadreel.com and get shooting you got a chance to win a million dollars do it and let the english see you do it it's from braveheart all right welcome back to one-on-one -on -one with me Christian Harloff, and listen, I am very, very excited today. I, I've been very lucky over the last couple of weeks to talk to some people I've been fans of for a very long time. A couple of weeks ago, I had uh, the, the great Clancy Brown on, and then as I'm looking and I'm going through my, my Twitter responses, I see a name, and I'm like, it can't be. Uh, wait a minute. And I see Kurtwood Smith, and I'm like, not, that's no. And it's got the blue check mark. And I'm like, wait a minute. And it is. It's Kurtwood Smith. He's here. He's joining me. Thank you so much for joining me today, sir. How are you? My pleasure. Nice to be here. I'm just getting over a cold, but otherwise I'm fine. Well, I appreciate you being here. And I mean, I was going through, I mean, I know I could off the top of my head and name tons of stuff that I, that I loved you in, but then just, just going through some of this stuff. Some stuff, I, 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 A Team, 21 Jump Street, oh, Malcolm in the Middle, I mean, <laughs> Robot Chicken, House MD, you know, you got Dead Poet Society, Star Trek, <laughs> Robocop, Rambo 3, uh, all this stuff that I was like, oh my God, that's right, that's right, that's right. So I'm um, thank you. You're you're not only you making the the film fan of me and the, and the stuff that I loved growing up and stuff that I loved um, last year. Things yeah, I appreciate you being here today. Well, thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Of course, it, when I hear all my credits listed like that, it makes depresses me a little bit. Why is that? Oh, it's just. It covers a long period of time. I mean, but, but it's also, I mean, you should, I mean, like the, the, are, is there some, I mean, I'm sure, like in any, any profession, you look and you say to yourself, there's some things, eh, you know, that there's other things that maybe would have done different, maybe wouldn't have done at all, but then there's other stuff that you hold it like, like a trophy, like it's a mantle, like I'm mm -hmm. very proud of that. Mm -hmm. um, is what, I mean, I'm sure there's so much, this is such a tough question, but there's there something that if someone asked you out of all the films that you were in, the one that you are the most proud of, I know there's tons of them, but what film? Um, it's sort of hard because um, there are, uh, well, Robocop, of course, yeah. because that kind of got me going career-wise. I mean, I'd done stuff before that, but people hadn't really noticed. <clears throat> um you know, I'm I'm really proud of the work that's being done in a show called Patriot yes. on Amazon yep. that I'm doing right now, and uh, that pleases me a lot. That this late in my career, I can still be doing on something, doing work on something that I'm proud of and yeah. seems to be working. And well, you are and that you, they're casting me in. So well, yeah. and you've been doing it tenfold. All the stuff that you've done, we mentioned. I mean, the '70s show, obviously. Um, well, let's 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 go back. Let's start. I mean, so you were you were born in Wisconsin. Yes? That's right. And you're born in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and then you, and you, you how how long before you move out to, to California? Because I also I read I read I didn't know this about you that your mom was a country singer. 
<laughs> is that is that the no, truth? That's no, that's not true at all. So who puts that? Who puts that fact out there? Who does that? Where do they, where do they that's get a, that? That's a, a myth. <laughs> no, that's a distortion of something. Uh, my mother named me Kurtwood, right? Uh-huh. And so people always ask about that. And so the story is basically that she wanted to call me Kurt after this country and western singer. Okay. But she thought it was too short for Smith, so she just added the wood. You yeah. know. Um, so somehow that turns into my mother's a country <laughs> singer, I, you know. Well, and I, and, and so I, we've just. But they used the, to have a little family band. She's I'm very proud oh, okay. of. Okay, so but she, yeah, did, she so she would sing and stuff too. Yeah, yeah, in her living room <laughs> with her brother and, and you her were the sister audience. and her right. dad. Right, right. No, oh. I was. That was before me. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So all right. So then you then at one point you so when do you discover that. You want, you're going to, I don't know, maybe you move with your family. As being in Wisconsin, coming out to California, when do you catch the bug? Like all, all that stuff as far as performing. Well, when do you know that you want to? <clears throat> well, I came to California when I was like 10. My okay. family moved here. Okay. Obviously, I didn't, I didn't set out on the road myself. Um, we moved out here when I was 10, and it was really kind of, you know, we went from, a, we lived in a town in Wisconsin that had like 1,200 people in it, and we moved to Los Angeles, so. That was a little traumatic. Overwhelming, for sure, <clears throat> too, yeah. huh? Yeah. And, uh, in fact, we were... We first lived in an apartment a couple blocks from the MGM Studios, which you could see out our kitchen window, and that was kind of fun. Um, I wasn't really interested in acting until I was in college. Okay. You know, it was kind of an outgrowth of stuff I did in high school, which yeah. was speech tournament-oriented, oral interpretation, and okay. things like that. So you had no yeah. business to getting into the arts. What, what, so what was your, when you, you remember when you were growing up, like as far as like, besides, like when you're 10, like what's the, everybody wants to do something. Do you remember like the, what the vision was of what you wanted to do back then? No, no. I, you know, I think I used to want to be a policeman. Okay. And then I probably, at some point I thought I would end up being a teacher and I was a teacher for a little while. Yeah. Um, and... But acting never crossed my no. mind. Were you yeah. a tough kid when you grew up? I feel like you could, you could throw some hands. <laughs> no, no, no. No, you weren't, no? No, no. no, no I just, I think, I think no, I just talk I, my way out of trouble. Really? So, I, guess, I guess it's because of Robocop. <laughs> I, think, oh, I think you see yeah, Robocop yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't mess with you. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with you. Um, <laughs> so, so you go, but okay, so then you get into college and then, so what is it that you say, oh, okay, no, wait a minute. This is something I didn't realize that I loved, and I, I could I could do this. I want to do this. Oh, I just did this. I took an acting class for fun, and okay. the first scene I did, I went, I can do this. Yeah. And the reaction that I got from the teacher and other people was positive. And, <clears throat> and that's it. I was off. And that was yeah. it. And that's it. So my, um, it's funny, cause my, my father-in-law, was um, he taught at USC for a long time. Uh, Jim Wilson was uh, hmm. his name, Professor Jim Wilson. And he, similar, He what he was doing is he, he had... Kind of caught the bug, did some stuff, but he went on a different career. He decided to just teach, and that's what he did. He was a professor mm-hmm. at USC for thirty years, and I say that because as I'm he taught, did he teach acting. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He taught, yeah. Okay. So it's when when I'm sitting here talking to you, you, you remind me of him, and hmm. as I'm having this conversation with you, knowing that you're going on that path, you knew it. And so, at, what's the what's the work ethic like? Then once you realize I'm doing this, I want to go as a career because this is I would assume in like the sixties. 70s? Yeah, 60s. 60s. Yeah. So, and you want to, and the, and it's such a different time, the way the business works, all this stuff. And um, <clears throat> what's the, what, how do you pursue it? Like, what, what's, what's the goal to say, this is what I'm doing? Um, I was doing theater. I, I was doing uh, theater in college. And uh, while I was at a community college, San Mateo um, Community College, um, or College of San Mateo, mm-hmm. I guess it was. We were doing a play, and um, a friend of one of the instructors uh, came to the play, <clears throat> and he had just started a Shakespeare festival. Okay. And we were doing the Shakespeare. We were doing the fellow. And um, so he saw me, and he asked if I uh, would be interested in joining the Shakespeare company. Were you Yago? No, no. I was, I was Othello. You were Othello. Yeah. Okay. Remember, this is in the sixties. Okay. Uh, yes, I was a nineteen-year-old white boy playing Othello. Okay. Right? okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, so I said sure, and um, and um, that was it. Uh, okay. Was located at Santa Clara University, but we were professional within about a year, mm-hmm. and that kind of really got me going. I mean, I continued going to college during the year, sure. but I think I learned much more during that 
Shakespeare Festival or yeah. anything else. Just like getting the getting the chops, getting the tools kind of yeah, sharpened yeah. and yeah. stuff. And, and you got to work when you're doing Shakespeare, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. And, that's, and, and that is, again, why I bring up my father-in-law, too, because I think mm-hmm. that the, he, the idea of what acting, and maybe you can speak on this more, more so than even I can, but it's like the, of what acting, the way acting is taught now, mm-hmm. so the way acting was taught back then and the way like the American actor is I think I mean whether it's the a lot of the social media stuff that's out there and the way that with reality and television and all these different things that come out there it's like it's more I don't know it's more about I feel that it's acting almost has become more about celebrity and more mm. so than even even the craft as where and when you're talking you don't hear a lot of the a lot of actors I was doing Shakespeare and I was, that's actors yeah. like yourself coming up the ones that are really classically trained, that's yep. where you usually start from. Do, do, you, do you agree with that perception of it, or do you think there are some people who actually do go that route? Well, I think it depends. You know, I mean, I think that there are probably a lot of people in New York that kind of came up uh, more in the way that I did, which is you go through college and you work during the summer theaters, and, and then when you get done, you probably work in a resident company. I worked in a resident company. Right. Well, I taught college, and then I went back... To, to acting and uh, worked in a resident company okay. and um, in uh, Los Gatos, California, and uh, and that way. And uh, I think, but Hollywood is different, I, yeah. I guess. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know when I left, I was in a company in Los Gatos, and I was in my 30s, and I decided to come to Hollywood, and it was like starting over for me. I mean, I was one of the leading actors in that company, mm-hmm. and um, then when I came to LA, different animal. Yeah. Completely right. Yeah, I, I fortunately I knew a couple of people, and they kind of helped me get a few auditions here and there. Yeah. You know, does it hurt the confidence though? Like when you when you come out, because like you said, you started yeah. this theater. It does, huh? Sure. Yeah, and it's good for you though. Let me tell you. Right. Later on, you know, and then, and then, because then when you finally start making it, you know, you have that. You know, I was the day player. Right. That I'm might be doing a scene with now i know what that's like right. and uh you test yourself you also you, mm-hmm. you, it, it makes it, it's got that kind of it's it, again you test yourself in the fact that can you take that kind of rejection and we hear it from mm-hmm. from actors and and, every, and, and yeah. all the time but it's like walking to that room auditioning yeah. feeling like and i had it i had a, a young actor on here not too long ago um uh, hayden sito who was in uh, edge of 17 and uh <clears> and he was, uh, the movie, he was talking about his the process and just going in there and just be like yeah no no, no. And then when, like you said, <clears throat> when you start to get the roles and you feel like, oh no, I needed that. Yeah. Because it helps kind of build your character. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So then at what point to when you start getting in your, and you, you know, you said you met a couple of friends, you had friends out here. They helped you out with, with auditions. Are those other actors? Are they, are they people in the business? Are they- uh, they were people that I knew that were actors at the time, but like, um, one of them in particular, one, Paul Ventura, and he came down here, he, he went into casting and first he ultimately became a commercial mm-hmm. uh, casting director. But when he was first down here, he was an assistant to a major casting director. Okay. So he used to kind of like suggest me for things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you remember the first like so do you, you get a, a film role for your first? Because I think No, the first thing I ever did actually didn't have anything to do with him. Uh, okay. uh, it was another somebody else that I had worked with in the Shakespeare company and she had become a writer and she was a writer on um, Lou Grant, okay. and um, so she um, introduced me to the casting director, and they brought me in for, you know, the, f- the fireman, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, okay. and um, on an episode, and I had a nice little scene with Bobby Walden, and, and that was the first thing I did. It. Okay, yeah. so, and, and back then, like, so today, with when you have, like, uh, because TV, like you were just talking about before when we were talking about Patriot, is that even, I, even when you're watching Patriot, it's got, like, this... Like, the way that Amazon, Amazon, you put things on Amazon now, theatrical, the way that they're shot, it's yeah. TV and, and film. I mean, sometimes it's, there's not this kind of stigma that maybe I think that there was back right. in the 60s, 70s to where it's like you're either a TV actor or you're a film actor. Meryl Streep's on, what's that? Oh, right. Which is, she's, oh, yeah, the second season right, 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 of right, right, Big right. Little Lies. She is on Big Little Lies, right. Yeah. Um, and exactly, exactly. So, I mean, even hearing like Julie Roberts wants to do TV now, all, mm-hmm. all this stuff. So, mm-hmm. but yes. And so do you, back then when you're getting started... Well, you, you know why they... Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, I don't no, mean to interrupt please, no, you. Please, please. But the reason they wanted to do TV okay. is because uh, it can be more interesting. I mean, you know, uh, Character what they're doing 
on these on the on these series. I mean, even if it's only ten episodes, that's like they have ten episodes to develop yeah. something. You take a book and you sh- sh- cut it down to between ninety minutes and two hours. Uh, it's not the same as if you have ten hours right. to work on it. Yeah. It's the same for your character. It's it's more interesting. You know, it's I agree with you. Push. I think that, that's why things like, like Amazon and Netflix. That's, that's mm. why they pop now because of that yeah. exact reason. You can really dive deep. I mean, look, Stranger Things. We're in season two of Stranger Things. When you right. watch it, it's because I wouldn't want to see Stranger Things as a two-hour movie. It would you like, exactly no, for what no. you just said. Yeah. You cram it into one thing, mm-hmm. and then you lose a lot of the essence of the characters. Like even some of these the big blockbuster movies that come out it's like I wish that you could have developed that side character that you set up but you can't because you only have like a condensed time to do it yeah well those movies are too big it's, it's, you know. some, some of them are yeah they're, they're, I mean they're too big for television right you know? e- exactly and, <clears throat> and if you do it you gotta sh- you gotta stretch it and then therefore yeah. stretch the budget, budget and change yep. the tone um, okay, so do, but the, my my reason for asking that question is at that point in time, do you have because now it's like I do I'll do TV, I'll do film, whatever the role is, and, and I like it, I'll I'll, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Back then, do you have to make the decision? Uh, I'm I really want to focus kind of all in on TV. I want to focus on film, or do you say, look, I just need to eat, so I'm going to work. You know, that's interesting. Um, I think that uh, after RoboCop, yes, um, I want to talk a lot about RoboCop. I <laughs> thanks. <laughs> it's just. What came to me were films. Now, I don't know if my agents were just saying, no, we don't want to hear about television. Yeah. But, I, you know, I didn't hear anything about TV for, for some time. Okay. You know? um, so, you know, it was a movie called True Believer that I did, yeah. and then uh, Dead Poets Society. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. We, can, we, can't, we can't jump around like that because those are two movies that I want to dive into because those are two of sure. my favorites. I love... Actually, oh, it's funny. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. I, I, was, I was at... Um, so, Screen Junkie is another company that... Um, that we that we're friends with, and they did a, this great benefit yesterday for women in film, and they just this whole they basically do these movie fights, right? And mm-hmm. there there was an argument of what is the fl- the most flawless movie, and the three arguments were Princess Bride, uh, Goonies, and RoboCop, and oh. Robo- RoboCop won. I, uh, RoboCop won. Uh, Hal, ah. Hal Rudnick, who was the judge, and we, he and I were talking yesterday, and we, he's like he was telling me about that fight, and I said I'm actually uh, I, I'm going to have Kurt Smith in tomorrow. He's like, wait, what? So uh, the, the RoboCop. Let's let's talk about first of all sure. how you get this role in the first place, and then yeah. everything that happens because that's the movie. That movie came out in I'll tell you, nineteen eighty seven yeah. is when it came out. I saw that movie when I was eleven years old, and oh, it. Geez. I know whether or not I should have uh, at that time. Who knows? But I saw it and it. I loved it. I mm. loved it at eleven years old. I love it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you scared the hell out of me. <laughs> um, tell me about getting that role about when you hear about the audition, do you, do you just, does it, does it say, that's a juicy role. I, I, I'm going in for that and I'm gonna crush this thing. Okay, well, I had done a movie called, um, uh, oh, oh God, um, it's basing on the name of it now. Um, there was a couple, there was one that you, did, that you did that I didn't even realize you were in because I, I, it's a movie that I really liked when I was a kid again. And it was a sequel to, uh, to Saturday Night Fever. That's Staying Alive. Oh, Staying Alive. And you're in Staying Alive. Staying and, Alive, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe. Barely in but, Staying Alive. Yeah, but, but I, and I'm, I'll, we'll come back to this. I think that, that, did that start your relationship with Stallone? Because you were in a couple things with Yeah. Him. Yeah, okay. That did start my relationship All right, so we'll with go Stallone. back to that because that's, uh, okay. Staying Alive was great. Um, uh, not Renegades. Um, and it's Flashpoint. 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 It's called Flashpoint, okay, Flashpoint. with uh, um, Chris Christopherson and Tree Williams, okay. and um, and I was the bad guy. Okay. That was tricky to get, but once I got that, then the movie didn't go anyplace. Uh, but the person who cast, not me, and then somebody else had cast. Uh, Chris and Treat and I, mm-hmm. and then someone else took over the project. That person was a, familiar with my work from that. Okay. And then also I found out later that the assistant director on Flashpoint became one of the producers on Robocop. Oh, okay. So they, I didn't know that about Arnie at that time, but um, uh, I got called in for it, and I thought because of what I had played in that other movie that that they, I knew they wanted to see me for Dick Jones and Clarence. Okay. Oh, wow. And okay. I thought, well, it's Dick Jones that they're interested right. in. And, you know, Cl- Clarence was, for my money, much more fun, but I figured it's Dick Jones. So I went in, I did the audition for both, and went home, and then yeah. 
And, and then they called me up and said, well, you got the part. And I said, yeah. And they said, yeah, it's Clarence. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was very excited, I remember. Yeah. And then I, I didn't know who Paul Verhoeven was. Oh, okay. So, in other words, I was not, I didn't prepare myself for the audition as much as I should have. Uh, I, I then went and looked well, at some role. of his films. Yeah, I got the role. Yeah. But, uh, no, but still, you should always know who the people are in the room. You know, it's, it's kind of, anyway. Yeah. Um, so I looked at his films, the films, that, his Dutch films that were on, um, uh, on VHS at that time. Right. And I thought, oh, man, this is, because I just thought it was a comic book. You know, okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't really see the depth in it. I yeah. read the script quickly and just focused on the, on the roles, you know, and... Uh, once I, I saw his other movies, I thought, this movie could really be something Yeah, with him directing it. Oh, even before, okay, so before, just because you saw these movies and now, yeah. because, now because you do the, do the research, you see what he's capable of, yeah. and you go, wait a minute, like, not only, I mean, you were going to commit to it, obviously, 100% before him, but now you know, now you have even a little bit more energy pumping into you, like, oh, this is the yeah, guy yeah, who's directing yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then I had breakfast with him, Okay. and uh, before we started shooting, before we went to Texas, and... We had a very positive talk. We both seemed to be on the same plane, and um, so then I was very excited. When yeah. I went on that. So I read again, and this is my. I'm hoping this one's factual. Um, that uh, you did a lot of improv in in this role. No, this one not either. It, again, it's just kind of an exaggeration. Okay. It wasn't so much an improv. Ed Newmeyer, who wrote the movie. Mm -hmm. um, Once we started shooting, like when I was doing the first scene, I would make suggestions to Paul about what I might do in the right. scene. And he was responsive to it, you know. Um, and then Ed kind of picked up on that, and we started talking about the dialogue. And so he encouraged me to come up with stuff. Now, we didn't improv on the set. What we did was I would go over it beforehand okay. with either Paul or Ed, and then... You know. And then you do it, okay? So you guys, would, you guys would collaborate, and then say, "That's okay, right." Okay, so it was uh, like I feel that the character would do this, and you, Paul, would kind of bounce it back yep, and forth, yep, yep. and then the magic yeah. would then happen because. But then it got to so, and we come to the scene, and Paul would say, "So, what do you want to say here?" And yeah. you know, I mean, and so then yeah. we kind of work it out. But it wasn't improv in the sense that we just turned the cameras on and I started. Talking. Right, it was improv throughout the scene, you know, through through the excuse me, throughout the uh, you know the audition process, not audition, excuse me, the, the rehearsal project mm. where you guys would be doing some stuff and then. Something would happen. Yeah. He'd say, "Use that. Do that. Let's." let's yeah. Try well, it. a lot of it was just was Ed and I in the trailer beforehand, okay. you That's, know, because uh, we didn't have Paul didn't have the kind of time to improv, right? You know, uh, I mean, if you're going to really improv stuff, you got to, you know, you got to start out and then you got to, okay, let's go back and do it again. Throw this out. Throw this out. Keep this. Yeah. You know, and that goes on for a while. And he didn't have that kind of time for that movie. Right. So I mean, and that movie. So it, it's it, it seemed like a, like a whirlwind. Um, it wasn't, yeah. yeah, and then so thirteen million dollars. Yeah, the movie cost thirteen million dollars. And and the, the uh, and what it has become now. I mean, in, in general, it's like the things that it's just uh, like I told you, just the conversation that that happened yesterday f for that film. It, it was something. It was really. It was special. You were right. Your instincts were right to where it was. It, it absolutely kind of <coughs> took off when you're shooting the movie. Do you still have that same feeling, or do you say I don't know if people are going to respond to this because it's look, it's brutal. The movie's brutal. Um, it gets. I mean, even there. I mean, I read some stuff that they had. Even the studio was like, or, or was, "Let's pull back a little bit because it's so brutal." Um, yeah, and they ended up making it more brutal by doing <laughs> that. It was weird. Yeah, uh, because like that, a lot of it centered around the scene when we killed uh, Murphy. Yeah, and um, it was really over the top. Yeah, initially, and they. The more you cut it down, the more realistic it became. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was. Yeah, and it kind of worked for the, it kind of worked for the movie. So that it, um, now, when you were working with your crew in the, in the film, the two, like, I mean, as far as your process goes as as, a, as an actor, as a performer, are you like how, how's the camaraderie with you guys? Are you because you you know you're you're kind of bossing those guys around and 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 you know that you're like I said, you're terrifying well, in that film. And well, that's that's one of the nice things. It can be one of the nice things about location working on location, yeah. especially uh, when you're younger and you got, you know, and there's a bunch of guys together, you know, you can kind of hang out, Yeah. you know, go to the state fair while 
while Robocop has to march around the parking lot <laughs> with a mime <laughs> learning how to walk right, right. in that outfit. Uh. Um, and we'd go to the state fair uh, or go to dinner or, you know, so we were a pretty tight group. Yeah. And like, um, so I, again, the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger at one point supposed to be uh, Robocop is what there the was talk of. And yeah, then, then probably. Apparently because of the, the suit itself is, uh, they get Peter Weller. Peter Weller mm-hmm. does it and becomes perfect for the role mm-hmm. as well. Um, what's the, uh, again, how's the, how's the relationship with you and, and, and Peter Weller on scene and on, on set? And well, that developed. Yeah. You know? Start out kind of strange or? A little, yeah. because when I was on the way to the set, uh, the driver who picked me up at the airport, I remember, you know, like I said, you know, I came up through theater, yeah. through resident theater, and Shakespeare companies and stuff. So I'm in the van, and I said, so, you know, what are these guys like? You know, because most of them, I'd never met Peter. They said, all right, you know, well, or he uh, he doesn't want anybody to call him Peter. You're supposed to call him Robo or um, Murphy. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, uh, won't be a problem. I just won't talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? I just... Can't do that. You can't I can't do go that. around pretending. Now I know um, some great actors do that. Daniel Day Lewis right. apparently is like that, but maybe that's why I've never been cast in a Daniel Day Lewis movie. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> right? I I so I just went about doing point. my scene. Yeah. I you know, and um, they introduced me to him, and I said hello, and um, and then as it went along, that all got dropped, okay. you know, and then Peter just. Peter's a very charming and fun guy. Maybe just a way for yeah. him to get comfortable at a point. I guess so. Yeah, because I, I mean, know. that's difficult for, for an actor as well, too, when you're, because, again, we're, as where you're coming in here to play this kind of terrifying villain, you're still, like you said, you're able to walk around, do your thing, is where he's got to get comfortable in this yeah. suit and be, so that, that's got to be intimidating for someone, too, especially because that can come off really silly if it doesn't come off the, oh, he the had right a, line. He had, you know, we were shooting in real hot weather down there in texas in august right. and september that's it right because none of it was even shot in nasty detroit, right? right none of it was even shot in detroit right or like no we no. never went to detroit right. some of the uh uh the um, steel mill stuff was shot in um uh pennsylvania right. but uh, most of the movie 90 percent of the movie was shot in uh, dallas wow um and it was hot and a lot of these places of course were not air-conditioned and so whenever I'd feel sorry for myself because I had to wear this coat and we we're in a warehouse and it's 90 degrees, it's 100 degrees outside and inside it's horrible. I just look at Peter and he'd have all that crap on and you know I'd go, oh, I'm, not, I'm all right. <laughs> Suddenly you're in the <laughs> Arctic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously. So yeah. all right, the movie comes out and it gets and people love it. People yeah. love it. And do you tell yourself? Oh, like, I said the other thing was you were yeah, asking about yeah, you know. how, how it went on. We would. We were invited to see dailies, and the way they did dailies that, at that time on that movie was, uh, just because of time, I think, um, we would see them on Saturday. Yeah. And so we were invited to see our dailies, the game. Mm-hmm. And so we would go on Saturday, 3 o'clock, whatever it was, and yeah. we'd watch our dailies. So we knew, I knew all along that those scenes were working. Okay. Um, it was important for me because I was still kind of new, you know? Right. And... Uh, what I wasn't seeing when I saw the movie, I'd been in, I was in Japan, and when I came back, the movie was uh, about to open, and they asked me if I wanted to see a screening. So I went to a screening of it. It was my wife and I and a critic. And your wife was in the movie, correct? She was. She yeah. was in the movie. Yeah, yeah she yeah. played uh, Barbara, yeah. Dick Jones' secretary. Right, right, right. right. Um, I was blown away because what I hadn't seen all along was all the comedy, yeah, all that great satire from with the news stations mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I was you know, so that's knocked out when I saw it. So you knocked out when, when you see it, and you know, and so then it it comes out. It's it's a hit. It, um, mm-hmm. And what's uh, because that's your like you said that's the, that's the one that changes mm-hmm. your career. Yeah. How so? Like what what starts happening? More auditions, more phone calls, more offers. What's what starts happening after Robocop? Yeah, people want to see me for movies. Yeah. For good parts in movies, yeah. instead of just you know, um, 
you, you start to get some yeah. stuff and, like, mm-hmm. and then right around I, I don't know it was maybe a year two years later when I actually might have been 89 I, you'll know better than me but Dead Poet Society comes out mm-hmm. um, 89 man you <coughs> in that movie uh, you, you 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 and I think this is what you wanted to do you 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 piss me off in that movie and yeah. then you break my heart. Oh, great. Um, that's exactly what you do yeah. because even, cause it's that, even thinking about it, I, I start to get uh, emotional because of what you, it's that my son, my son. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, but you know that everything inside of what he, the pain that this guy was going through. And I, this is the stupidest question in the world, but how, in, how hard was it to film that scene? Because you do, you have, you have children yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, how hard is it to to get into that to to you know after all of that leading up to yeah. that moment? There's two things about that scene, um, and maybe it's good the way it turned out. Um, that scene wasn't in the original script. Okay, uh, it was that I was in bed. I pop up in bed, and then the, we're at the funeral. Oh, and so I was sitting in my room in the hotel, and pages slid under my door. And I picked him up and I said, Mr. Perry finds his son dead. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> right. I need more money for this. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> no, I just, I just thought, oh, wow. Okay. All right. And yeah, you to, I, mean, I yeah. just didn't think about it. Yeah. You know, I just mean, did. I just did it. Yeah. And, you know, Bob wasn't there uh, because he, just because of time, he had to work in the morning. Yeah. So they asked me if it would be okay. So... One of the assistants was laying on the ground um, behind the desk. You can't see him. So, you know, so I'd have somebody to grab on to, yeah, yeah, but, you know, it certainly wasn't him. So, it, you know, it's just one of those things about the business, you know, uh, let's all pretend. And, um, uh, yeah, it was uh, powerful. Yeah. That movie, I have to say, uh, that movie, and then and then some actually from that '70s show are, are, are in a way have I've I've gotten comments that mean the most to me. Yeah, uh, because uh, I've had multiple people tell me that uh, that movie uh, changed their relationship with their father yeah. or. You know, this friend of mine had this problem with his dad, and he made his dad go and see the movie, and it changed their relationship. And I thought, you know, to be part of something that changed people's lives, yeah. I mean, not just entertained them, scared them, whatever, but right. actually changed their lives, is, is, it's great. It's really special. It really is. And it's, it's funny you say that, too, because when I, I you normally have the conversation with a lot of, um, and I, I actually have not asked you and I'd like to too is when you I mean only you were you were you were a little older and and you're in college when you were making the decision that you wanted to become an actor and did you tell your family about about that and um at the time or did you just kind of do and the reason I asked that is very similar to the conversation that we're having because I've had a lot of of actors who were just some it was easy to tell their parents they were supportive of it others no uh that's not what you're gonna do you're gonna do something else no I had no my parents had no problem with me being an actor right Go and do your thing. Yeah, they, they trusted in what you were doing, and yeah, yeah, it's kind it's of just, it's, it's interesting. And they just it, and what was important to them was that I go to college because yeah. they they didn't really have that opportunity. So. And that's and that's well, that's why going back to your role, obviously, in Dead Poets Society of that of of what it of what it is, and the, and this is what you're doing. This yeah. is yeah, and, and, and I'm glad you, that you said about breaking his heart because you because that guy really loved his son. He yeah. wasn't doing that to be mean to his kid. He he really thought that that was he was doing the best for that kid. Right, and that's why. And that's what's tragic about it. That's why I'm glad you got those pages under your door. Mm-hmm. That's why because I don't I think that mm-hmm. if that scene doesn't happen, yeah. then you're just that. that right. the, see, you you led him to that. You led Absolutely. him to that, as opposed to he, he just approached it wrong. Yeah. He just approached it wrong. I knew what you were trying to do there. You just mm-hmm. approached it wrong, especially if you're being a dad and mm-hmm. understanding, like you know, that thing of just like you know, you want you want the best for your kids, and yeah. you're trying to make the decision for them, and especially in the time that, that movie That's takes right. place. Yeah. Um, but I do want to ask you about, um, and I know that there were some scenes that, with with the late great Robin Williams um, mm-hmm. because. Did you get a chance where you're on set a lot with him? Because I know there's a, mm-hmm. there's, there's only that really this that, that moment. Um, I knew Robin from before. You did know him from uh, before. Okay. Uh, when I was in, uh, was, 
when I was doing theater in the Bay Area, I did a couple of guest artist stints at College of Moran. Yeah. When Robin was there, Robin went from there to Juilliard. So he had done a couple yes. of years in, in, in College of Moran. Did you know Christopher Reeve as well, too? Or, uh, I did or not know. Him? I met him once, okay. but I didn't know him. Okay. Um, and um, so I knew Robin from that, and I had done a couple of shows with Robin. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one show was an, it was an original show. I can't remember the name of it now. But there were only three of us in the show. A woman who played my daughter, and Robin and I. <laughs> and um, I was the father. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, Robin was the suitor, and he was a weird yeah. guy. Right. You know, lived in an egg. <laughs> Don't ask. Right. But I know I'd be on stage with, and the audience would start laughing. Yeah. You know, and there wasn't anything funny going on at that moment. And I'd turn around, and Robin would be, and he would never tell me what he was doing. Right. You know, no, nothing, nothing. You know. Did you ever find out what it was? No. <laughs> just no. something something goofy. Yeah, I mean that something was something goofy, you know. Yeah. Uh, but he was a wonderful guy. Yeah. That was But because of that, and I saw I didn't see very much of him in the movie, you're right. Uh, but you know, it was fun being able to say hello to him. But right. but every once in a while I'd see Robin. Uh, I saw him, I don't know, about a year and a half before he before he left us yeah. and um you know, he was great. My wife, Joan, and I went to see him in a play, and the three of us sat backstage for a long time That's and chatted. Right. Yeah. And just, he could be so sweet and yeah. charming and fun to talk to. And, and then if you get too many people around, then he'd just be wow, right. He's on. crazy He's really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, and that's, I mean, I, the, way, the way I was able to, I met him briefly, because I was mm-hmm. a comedian for a long time at the comedy store, and, and he would come in. And mm-hmm. he'd come in and very, well, he was Quiet, sometimes humble, and mm-hmm. and then watch and then watch the brilliance of him. He did a he did a full. I think it was like an hour and twenty minutes in the main room of the comedy store. It was uh, I think like uh, I can't remember three four hundred people whatever it was with no microphone. Uh-huh. I've never seen that done to this day. With uh, no microphone, screaming, yeah. yelling, sweating, you know, doing the whole thing. Yeah. But anyway, to to and he was the only person ever, and I, I didn't have much. I didn't have any relationship with him, but he's the only person that I've seen in the media, celebrity, whatever that it touched me so hard when. Like you said, when, when we lost him, that I actually I teared up mm-hmm. and I found myself weeping for this man that I didn't know because I think yeah. of what he was able to do, and the way that he touched us um, through his films. But you did the same in that in, in that movie with that, and I'm and I'm so glad that we got a chance to talk to about both those movies because they, mm-hmm. they they're movies that had a powerful impact on me. I know for a lot of people who are watching and listening right now, but then the, the shift for what you you did then with the, the another big the big role is the '70s show. I mean, because that's that's then switching from here we are in RoboCop to where you're, mm. you're this maniacal villain who will shoot anybody at any time, and and then you've got the father that we just talked about, Dead Poets Society, this tense, stern. How do you get this role of this comedic? Uh, this, this, I mean, and it, and it's on for, it's on for so long. You're so great in, in the role. And by the way, are you friends with Fraser Smith? No. Uh, I thought that you were okay. I think radio, I might have met. I think I he's met He's a radio him. personality. Yeah. I, th- I thought for some reason that you were friends with, with Frazier. I remember, you know what? We had a long conversation about. I might this, have done it, his radio show. Maybe no. Yeah. I thought I thought because it, because it was a seventies. It was oh. we, we had a seventies show conversation. He mm-hmm. and I, and I thought for some reason that, that you guys were pals. But again, mm-hmm. it was the impact of it, we were talking about how good and what you did, and to watch that. Watch that performance because watch how because it's subtle at times. It's all and it's also chemistry. You've got to have that back and forth with your cast. And can you tell me a little bit about what that experience was like working on that show? It was great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, everybody got along quite well. And, yeah. You know, the kids were you know, pretty respectful of Deborah Joe and I, and, and yet they weren't a bit above uh, giving us a bad time here and there right. for fun. Right. Um, and uh, it was that great blend of, of w- doing the work, getting the work done, and yet being relaxed and having fun within it. Sure. You know, I mean, if there were, so if there was a little screwing around, there'd be a little screwing around. Right. It right. wouldn't like ruin the day. Right. You know, yeah. um, that kind of business. And they were all, <clears throat> they were all talented and they were all, and they are still are yeah. very smart people, and you'll notice that they're all still working. They're all popping, yeah, they're all, all working yeah. quite well. Yeah. And um, and do you know that though? Like very similar, you were saying when you were watching Paul's stuff beforehand, you said, "No, this thing could be big." Do you look at these kids and go, 
or even listen to him because you're not you're not just in the performance, but like look at what Ashton Kutcher has done, just mm-hmm. not in general with his with with acting, but I mean that guy yeah. has become kind of a mogul and stuff that he's done with with producing. Oh, well, but you saw that coming you, while we were shooting. You could see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that that's what I mean. Like you see <clears> these people, you see and you and like yeah. you feel your very perspective. He was so far, you know. I had had you know a number of years in the in the business, yeah. but and Ashton hadn't. But he was so far ahead of me in terms of. Uh, in terms of making use of his celebrity and, and how to use it and what to do with uh, uh, with his life in in the business, and it was it impressive. Back, yeah, I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. To where I think I don't I think that it's it's a matter of I think there's different schools. I think that the school that you, mm-hmm. like you said when you came mm-hmm. up because like I think that nowadays like you yeah for me it was just being an actor yeah and yeah, for like some you, of these people it's being. A mogul. The celebrity you also, know. too. And it's one of those things now. now you didn't have to go in when you're getting an agent. What's your Twitter following like? What's your, what's your Facebook like? Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like that's, that's a thing now. Oh, I know. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, when you talked about that at the beginning, uh, the reason both Clancy and I are on Twitter right. is we have the same manager. And it's because he and his assistant said, you got to do this. Yeah. And we're like, uh, Do you think but, they were right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, exactly. I do it. It's yeah. It's all right. I'm a, I'm one of those. I can't remember what they call them. Pretty much, I'm mostly like a ghost or something. Yeah. You know, I don't. You know, I got to be honest with you. I'm just too chicken to get involved in political discussions yeah. because if you do, you start making political comments. And yeah. I will retweet stuff sometimes, but I don't originate them because. If you do, you got to be able to stand up for it, right. which means you got to take the time to answer people, and and I just don't. That's not how I want to spend my yeah. time. I don't blame you. Yeah, I don't blame you. But some of the other stuff, it's 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 kind of fun. It's fun to you know say, okay, I'm doing this or doing yeah. that. Or, well, you look, know, that's whatever. how we got connected. Yeah. And and uh, 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 yes, and uh, that was interesting because I I didn't know what Clancy was talking about. He mentioned Jack Bender. And, oh, right. And I had just, you know, they have these throwback Thursdays or whatever yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, my, Kelly, uh, my manager's assistant, said, uh, can you come up with, because uh, it was Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm. She said, let's do it on Friday instead. Do you have an old? And so I thought, oh, and I'd totally forgotten about this movie of the week that I had done yeah, yeah. In, back in the mid-'80s. And so we found a picture and everything. But then I remember that Jack Bender had directed it. And Jack, oh. I knew from that, from that theater company I belonged to in Los Gatos, he had come up and directed a play. I wasn't in it, but I was in the company at the time, and so I knew him from that. Okay. And so I just threw that in about Jack, and then that led me here. And if, yeah, yeah. Because, because, because Clancy Brown, who was on the show a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were, I think I was asking about, it was, it was Lost, I believe it was the episode. Was it? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. And then, because that's when Clancy wrote back and Clancy said, had said, you know, you'd, I had asked him on the show and, and he, he could remember that he tweeted it out of me and that's, yeah. I could, it's so funny, I could tell just from that hour that we spent together that that's the kind of dude that he is. He was like, he's not gonna, he's not gonna <laughs> let that go. He's gonna, he's gonna <laughs> and, and he tweeted it back. I had a lot of fun yeah. um, talking with him. How did you, so, and the other things with Clancy, when I was going through his stuff is all the voiceover work. Uh, You've also done a lot of voiceover work yourself. Yeah, not like Clancy. No, I mean, yeah, I mean yeah. not only anybody's done yeah. as much as Clancy. I mean, he's, he literally, when I was talking afterwards because I was so in awe of all the stuff that he had done voiceover yeah. stuff, He's been in, in Star Wars stuff, Batman stuff, all the, yeah. all this stuff. Um, but you have done some voiceover stuff. Do you do you enjoy that as much? Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, um, it's fun, and uh, I do mostly cartoon versions of what I do. Anyway, yeah. you know, I'm, I do mostly Angry Fathers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I have a pretty good time. Well, I was on uh, Batman and did the Commissioner, yeah. and one of the Batmans. There's so many of them, um, and. Uh, but I was working with Andrea, who Clancy mentioned. She's yeah. she's really the top of the heap there, and that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I've done another number. Squirrel Boy was one that I, I <laughs> and you I have some fun with it when you do it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, um, I had a great do you enjoy that, so. do you enjoy doing because again from throwing it back to the '70s show here? Do you like when you sink your teeth into a role, say like that Poet Society, and you're able to go deep? get really that emotional core there of what you were, that powerful moment. And then you get the fun stuff like in comedy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, comedy is, is very hard. 
Mm -hmm. Comedy is not easy, and people don't realize that a lot of mm -hmm. times. What do you enjoy more when it comes to you know your performances? Do you like to try to find a nice comedic role, or is it if, if you can nail, nail that dramatic role? What do you find more satisfying? Well, you know, I'm going to kind of cop out on that and say that they're both really special yeah. in different ways. And Just depends. what's really neat is when you can be in a show like Patriot, yes, where. I get to do both. Yeah, well, let's talk yeah. about that then. So, Patriot, so you, and that's been going on since 2015, the show. You know, mm. 14, 15? No, 16. Really? I thought it was doing uh, okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, because we've only done one season. God, second season. Right. Second season is done. We right. shot it in France. Okay. Which was pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Four months in Paris. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's, it's done, but Amazon wants to hold it till November. Why is that? Did they say because they think that that's the best that's time. That's the best for, time for a release. Um, uh, probably having to do with other shows that they might want to be pushing yeah. at particular times and um, okay. whatever. You know, they're looking at the calendar from their point of view. Sure, you know, sure, it's sure. not my. That's where. That's where I have to go. Yeah. Well, I don't understand it, but. Well, whatever. That's so what you, you get paid right, for. Exactly. So, you and, know. and look, and we're in, and we're do, and we're into yeah. the next season here. So what? So tell me a little. But bit, anyway, yeah. what will be great about that is everybody will have to go back and rewatch the first season. That's the beauty. So. Well, that's the beauty. <laughs> that's the beauty of the um, of the streaming. Very similar yeah. to what we were just talking about before. Is now the difference again with television from years back to now is that you can watch everything in one shot. Yeah. I had missed when my second daughter was born. I wanted. I didn't get a chance to watch Stranger Things season two. Mm -hmm. I just binged the whole season two weeks ago. Finished yeah. the whole thing. It was, and, oh. and that's that's the beauty of what we're able to do now. Um, yep. So tell me a little bit. Tell the audience now, as far as Patriot goes, like because I know that you're very you're very proud of this role. You're, mm -hmm. This is a, this is a show that you and the whole show. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the entire show. And then so tell us a little bit about the show in general, about what what the role is, and um, and again, I guess people can people know now they can find that on Amazon. Mm -hmm. One of the difficult things about the show is is trying to pitch it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because it's um, it's complex. Uh, it's written by a guy named Steve Conrad. He writes and directs most of them. First season, he, he there were a few he didn't direct, um, and the second season he directed everything, as well as wrote everything. Yeah. Uh, so it's really one man's perspective, and it kind of needs to be. Uh, it follows a, a, a young. Um, 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 operative, um, you know, like from the CIA, yeah, yeah. Uh, who is uh, already at, uh, you know, at the stage of the game, he's burned out. Uh, it, the problem is his father is the head of that agency and asks him essentially for special things. Right. And um, so when we first see him, he's in Amsterdam and he's like getting, smoking dope and mm -hmm. getting high and singing and in nightclubs and he's falling, over. falling over. off his bicycle. He's over. Yeah. yeah. But then his, his old man says, I need you to do this. And so he just does it. Okay. I mean, that's part of the development of the whole show. He does what his father wants him to do, and whether he likes it or not. But he does the job. Mm -hmm. and, and, in, and so in this situation, they have asked him to... Um, take mo they want to influence an election in Iran, mm -hmm. but you uh, you can't just go to Iran and start passing out money. Right. So they got to get the money into Iran, and the way they try to do that is through uh, a, a third country, okay. Luxembourg in this case. And the way they want to get to Luxembourg without ha taking notice is <clears throat> by placing him in an American company. In this case, it's a company that makes pipes. Okay. And... Uh, they do business in Luxembourg. So when they go to Luxembourg, he goes with them, does his, drops off the money to the middle person that he's supposed to, and goes on about his business. Well, as he says at the beginning, nothing's simple, and it never works out like it's supposed to. Right. And of course, that's what happened. But when he gets placed in this piping company, mm -hmm. I'm his boss. Okay. And I know nothing about the... Uh, his, uh, you know, his business in the agency. Got it. Okay. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's a new employee that my superiors have kind of forced upon us, and he's screwing up my life. Yeah. Because he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, so he's placed in. So we have a 
that kind of a back and forth. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So, and, then, and I'm I, my character's in a situation where he's trying to rebuild his life. Yeah. Okay. And so we get flashbacks on what's happened to him and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So with flashbacks, what's going on with your with your? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. And then so this is a this is a role. Then um, again, like you said, you're proud of the show, proud of the role. And it's it, do you feel again because you, like you said, you've been in the business for a little while now, and is this still another? Like I think that that's why you'd want to do it in general is that. You, you learn more about yourself. You learn more. You challenge yourself, and you're yeah, able to absolutely, do Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, I did a show called Resurrection mm-hmm. that for me was kind of fun. He was not. He was just completely a sort of regular guy mm-hmm. who had lost his son, and then his son came back, and it kind of screwed up his yeah, life. Yeah. But, um, you know, it was one of the first times that I wasn't like, berating some younger man which is sort of my <laughs> stock and yeah, trade yeah. you know <laughs> right. berating young men right <laughs> but um and uh you know just had a lot of nice personal scenes with um yeah well it's, so well i'm 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 glad again the show is patriot check it out on amazon yeah please do um the other thing i did want to ask because we mentioned it before and i don't want to i don't want to glance over it was that so Saturday Night Fever for me when I was a kid. <laughs> Saturday Night Fever was a, a movie I, I absolutely yeah. loved. And so I Staying Alive, I remember my dad yeah. took us to see Staying Alive, a bunch of us, for my birthday party. I went and I saw Staying Alive. And then, <laughs> so you're in that movie, you strike up, and Stallone directs that film. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, I mean, because that's, that's 1980 when that movie comes out, uh, it, or 82. So yeah. when that movie comes out, <laughs> Stallone's a superstar at that point. Yeah. So like, how, does, how does the relationship with Stallone begin? Because you're in like what three, four movies with him? He Rambo three, Oscar, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and, and and that one, just those. Three. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, I was doing a television series, which is um, I did seven episodes of something. That was really the thing that kind of got me out of being a day player and yeah, yeah. put me under. It was called The Renegades. Uh, Patrick Swayze was in it. A couple other people. Yeah. Um, and so we were shooting in a Paramount. And. Um, I was in the commissary at Fairmount, and a woman came over to me and uh, introduced herself, and she was casting that movie, and um, asked if I'd be interested in doing it. I said, well, you know, I'm doing the show, and she said, yeah, well, you know, if it worked out, and I said, okay, so, you know, come over and see Stallone, so I went over and see him, and we talked a little bit, and uh, I don't remember if he actually had me read or not, you know. And uh, it was to play a choreographer, yeah. you know. And I was like, choreographer? Right. And I said, well, you know, I don't know anything about choreography. And he said, uh, well, that doesn't make any difference. So I was <laughs> like, okay. Did he have the fur coat on? <laughs> he did not have the fur coat on. He was in his office, yeah. and I remember it looked like he had just st- Stepped out of the shower after, <laughs> I mean, his clothes on, right. but stepped out of the shower after the working out, yeah, right, you know, sure, sure. just like this completely healthy human being. Yeah, right. Know. Larger than life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, well, that, and uh, yeah. so we did it, and um, it was fine. He directed it, and uh, they got most of my stuff. <laughs> you know, we had a whole sort of uh, audition scene yeah. uh, that went on, and, uh, and I, then I had... Uh, a scene with the producer and I had a scene with John Travolta uh-huh. uh, and that got lost and so you pretty much just see me walking around smoking and That's you it. know Doing, but, but you stay but you keep the relationship with him you keep the relationship with I do and then yeah. the next thing I know uh, because of that um, uh, they called me up in um, <clears throat> in 87 mm-hmm. after the movie would come out and I'm sure that is what played into it is after Robocop. So I saw after the Robocop, Robocop and yeah, went, yeah. oh, I remember that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they lost somebody on uh, Rambo 3. Oh, they were okay. already in production and they lost the actor that was playing that part. But they hadn't gotten to the, to the part in in the shooting schedule. Sure. So they called and asked me if I would do it. And yeah. I, was, um, I said, yeah, go to Thailand. Okay. That was it. Hang out with Richard Crenna. Yeah. You got oh, it. Man, you know. Richard Crenna. Um, and and and, and Sly was he was he was having a rough time at that time. And it, it, oh yeah, he's going through I think divorce or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, that's so. And do you you don't seem like maybe because like you don't seem to get caught up. At, you walk into a room with with again in eighty two whenever it was with Stallone. It's big. The guy's got Rocky, Rocky two, yeah. whatever. All these. 
does then does he ever get intimidated by the celebrity at all back then? I'm sure now it's it's kind of it's it, it's part of the job. But, yeah, I yeah. think you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's kind of hard not to, you right. know. I mean, I had uh, seen, you know, I was very impressed when I saw Rocky when I, you know, when it first came out. Sure. I mean, I was doing theater at that time, but I remember, you know, the whole his whole story behind it. Right. And all that, uh, you know, was very impressive. And then he went on to really capitalize on that and really, you know, I mean, he had to be kind of give the guys due, you know, yeah. and build his own personal empire yeah. um, and uh, <clears throat> made the most of it. So, but, you know, just because I'm sort of intimidated by them doesn't mean you have to sit in the corner and be quiet. I mean, right. I can still deal with it, yeah. you know. Uh, and because I had run into enough people by them, well, for Robin, for example, and people like that that were big stars that I knew from before. So, you know. It's just part of it. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Like you said, it's like you still, yeah. I think it's more like you you're, you respect and you, you, you sure. do that stuff, and it's just, but you're also, you were able to do your yeah. thing. And it only takes you a few minutes to see them as more human than right. they seem, yeah. you know. Um, I, last thing I want to ask you before we, before I, you know, again, thank you for being so kind for, for being here. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure to have you. Um, as we were talking with Clancy about Star Wars, and as you know mm-hmm. that I am a, I'm a fan of, of, of that mm-hmm. property in general, you have, have done I'm, a few things in Star I'm Trek. In the, the opposing you're universe. Really, you're in the, you're right? on the Red Sox. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but no, you're, you're, you're in the you're, Star Trek. You've done, you've done the show and, and movies. Is that, was, that, was that a lot of fun for you? Do those movies? You were in makeup for yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> the makeup part was... That was... Um, yeah. Um, I, I, you know, Clancy has a much better attitude about it than I do. Uh, yeah, but let me say, I was a big fan of Star Wars. You know, I was one of those guys that was, um, you know, went to see it, thinking, yeah. what's this going to be? And then, then I had to take, you know, my kids back. Right, and right, then, right, you know, right. on and on. So I was always a big... Then f- for the next three movies, I was first in line, you know. Well, not literally, but um, so Star Trek. Uh, oh, I, I, I was working on a film called Company Business with Gene Hackman and Mikhail Brishnikov, yeah. and it was directed by Nicholas Meyer, who had um, directed. Um, <clears throat> well, they used to joke that he had directed the good uh, Star Trek movies, you know, two and four, and right. um, so this was six. So he said, uh, he called me up uh, and said, hey, you want to be in this? And I said, sure. And so I did it. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, in the movie, in Star Trek VI, uh, in the president's office, you look out the back window and it's in Paris. You see the Eiffel Tower. Mm-hmm. And that's actually a personal joke. What was, what's the... Well, because in company business, which I had done with Nick, okay. the movie ends with us chasing Gene Hackman down the Eiffel Tower. Oh, okay. And so that's the only reason that, that it's in there. Oh, got that it. it's in there. Um, yeah. But, but um, so I did that, and it was fun. I, I, I had a good time doing the movie. The makeup's really no, huh? Well, here's the problem with the makeup. It's, it's once you get it on, first of all, it takes hours. Yeah. So you're there in the morning before you're really awake. And then... You got all the stuff on, right. and if you just went and acted and did your scenes and went home, it'd be fine. The problem is the waiting in between time right. because you can't really, you know, depending on the costume, I suppose. But both times I've done it, laying down is difficult yeah. because of this and that and the other thing, and especially in in the movie in Star Trek VI, I had contact lenses in which made everything oh, kind of just, blurry. Just and so I, you off, I just sure. <laughs> started feeling like I was sick, you yeah. know, because everything's blurry. And, well, look at what happened to Clancy. Clancy did get sick. He did get sick. Yeah. yeah see? <laughs> so, but, I mean, I think that we've come a Let long way. Let that be way. a lesson to you. I know, seriously. But, um, but anyway, uh, I, again, just listening to you, I, I could talk to you for five but hours. One of the things I want yeah, to say about please, that please, please, is please. that I, uh, they're so much fun to do because the world and the characters are all kind of elevated. And so it smacks of doing Shakespeare yeah, to okay. me, you yeah, know, yeah. just in a, you know, in a different kind of grander world. Yeah, so I exactly. always enjoy that aspect of it. Just to hear, I mean, there's so much, you, you have had such an incredible uh, career to hear all the people. I'm that very you, fortunate. I mean, the stuff that you've done and the, the work that you've kind of put in, but uh, the, the, and also the, um, 
just, I mean, we haven't covered the, the amount of people that you've worked with. I mean, just hearing like casually, as you should, but to me, you, and you did this movie with Gene Hackman. It's like, <laughs> I know. Well, I know. that was the way I felt at the time, though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a Gene Hackman. It was Gene a, did, Hackman. Were you were you shocked when he just when he called it quits? Uh, not in retrospect, no. you know. I mean, I was disappointed. Yeah. Just because I just love to see him work, One you know. The best. Yeah. Uh, but um, Gene's the kind of guy that I don't think wants to, to do old guy roles. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. So it doesn't. Doesn't shock me too much. It disappoints me. Disappoints you. Yeah. Um, well, he's an interesting. He's an interesting guy. Yeah. You know, uh, I loved working with him. He he uh, would do anything for the work. Yeah. You know, he came in on his day off to do the other side of a phone conversation. Um, you don't get that a lot. Huh? No, you don't. Yeah. And and uh, <clears throat> if you want to talk about that scene yeah. that you're doing or yeah. acting in general. He's right there. But yeah. he does not want to sit around and talk about a lot of his other movies. Right. He just wants to do the work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hearing your stories, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, it has been a pleasure. I know the audience is going gonna, is gonna to love this as well, too. There's so much more that uh, hopefully, you know, again, we can, we can do this again because I'd love to have you oh, back. Oh, well, thank you, Christian. You made stuff. it very easy and, and fun. I enjoyed it. Good. Thank yeah. you. Kurt Smith, please. And, and you can find him on Twitter. He is on Twitter. So make sure you check him out on Twitter and uh, check out Patriot. Under Tahiti Smith. Under Tahiti Smith and check out Patriot. It is on um, Amazon. You can, you can check out the, the season over there and do it. Please go and Thank check you. it out. And for this show, make sure that you subscribe here, whether it's on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. You can go to Podcast One, listen to it on your Android, or right here on YouTube. Mm. Leave your comments, do all that stuff. And thanks once again to you. Thank you to Kurtwood Smith, and we will catch you next time. That was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it, subscribe it, do all that stuff. Hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows. And we will continue to make more of them. You can find all your favorite shows from Collider on iTunes on the Collider Podcast Network. Thank you very much. See you next time.